The Whitman Basso Environmental Award goes again to National Geographic magazine. Peter Gwynn wrote a powerful article on the rhino wars about the killing of 160, no, 668 rhinoceros in South Africa in one year in order to meet the world demand for the horn of that animal. Accepting the award for the uh, environment is Peter Gwynn. It's a great honor to be here at the uh, Overseas Press Club, and I have to say that I don't know many of your faces, but I know many of your bylines. Um, I'm an avid reader of, of many of the people that have appeared on the stage, and it's an honor to be among you. And um, I think it's appropriate, actually, to, to acknowledge a member of our tribe who passed away this week. Um, another name uh, that I knew very well from a byline, but I didn't know um, her personally, but Lynn Duke from the Washington Post. <laughs> Somebody that I read, uh, especially as a young journalist, uh, somebody with a connection to Africa. And, um, and it's, uh, it's sad to see her, her passing, but there's some karma attached to this because this story took me to Southern Africa. And um, I'd be remiss not to acknowledge my great partner in this, in this uh, story. And actually, it was his idea, I have to say. He's from South Africa, Brent Sturton, the photographer. Thank you. But the irony is, is that Brent and I actually came up with the idea for this story, or Brent proposed it to me um, when we were in Timbuktu. Um, we were working on a story, and it was during Ramadan, and our hosts were complaining that actually the city was experiencing um, sort of an uh, upswing and in, in more uh, conservative uh, observance of, of Islamic practices. So we, we couldn't go out very much during the day, and, we, and there was no food to be had. So sort of in this sort of hunger-induced sort of mania cooped up. We were talking about what other stories could we do, preferably where we could actually eat. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and Brent started talking about what was going on, uh, an uptick that he had noticed in, uh, in rhino poaching. And the great irony of this was that when we were covering the rhino's story, we started to hear about things happening in northern Mali that would eventually you know, transpire to, to what's happening there now. So. Um, I'd also have to thank uh, the great support that I've had over the years from Chris Johns, a veteran foreign correspondent, the editor of National Geographic, Victoria Pope, my boss and his deputy, who have long been great mentors to me, and the editor on this story, uh, Mark Silver. Um, so they made huge contributions that I really appreciate. And I'd just like to end with a story that um, my youngest daughter told actually to her preschool class. She's four years old, and she announced to her preschool class that her father was actually working on a story. He works for National Geographic. They know all about animals, and he's working on a story about unicorns. <laughs> and the great irony is that the way things are going for rhinos, in not too many years, they may be just as rare as unicorns. So thank you very much. Thank you.